brief because the second part of the session, uh, the presentation is really, really small. Basically, it will be kind of very generic uh, explanation of what, <clears throat> how can you use the data or more considerations about the <clears throat> use of the data, and then you will have the opportunity to do an exercise with a group that will be randomly selected and uh, figure it out what is the best way <clears throat> to answer the potential question that you are presenting with your group, okay? So uh, with further delay, I would like to thank again to my colleagues Darren and Desiree. They have been very active in the chat. I really celebrate that. That means that you people are interested, are following. Uh, their advice is invaluable. Take advantage for whatever they are posting in the chat. Keep track of that. And now, if you don't have any more questions or comments, going once, going twice, I will share my screen for a very, very brief description of the last part of the presentation. And then I will... <clears throat> you will have some stuff. So this is called topics selected by the participants. So basically what we want to cover in this part is some other general considerations when you are using your data regard for answering your question, for using in your own base. So in the previous uh, uh, session, we covered about some of the uh, general recommendations about how to use it uh, uh, your goals, how to meet those issues, how to consider the universes, the variables, what other sources of information. So in this case, we will be focusing a little bit more in the historical part of the census, how things have been changing, and in a very, very brief matter, just highlighting the most important issues and the considerations. Otherwise, the history of the census will take us not only one full session, but maybe one full a uh, 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 university course for three credits, okay? So the census started historically here in Canada in, six, in 1665. There's a well of information about that in the uh, Statistics Canada library. Not all the information is readable, available for everybody. Some of them has to be or, or is available through very spe specific protocols, but <clears throat> you can see that most of the data that are available in our website since 1991 is the one that can have more uh, uh, information and richer data regarding the possibilities that are there for the issues that you are dealing in a daily basis. Other uh, uh, sources could be the Government of Canada publications and even some university uh, uh, libraries. They have very, very good collections of previous publications and previous uh, data dissemination from, from Statistics Canada that will help you to have a better access, a better understanding, and all the data that you may need regarding other possibilities, okay? So be careful because, as we already mentioned a little bit, we will make a little bit more of emphasis in this part of the presentation. <clears> Through <throat> time, there have been changes in the geography. Geographies in Canada, the good news are very dynamic. The bad news are very dynamic for the reason that we already explained it, but you want to be sure that when you are talking about Ontario in, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, 1881 is not necessarily the same geography that we are talking in Ontario for 2021. Why? Because the border change, they may be uh, some splits or some annexations, some uh, 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 additions, et cetera, et cetera, you want to be sure that all those changes <clears throat> are taken into account when you are reporting that amalgamations of municipalities nowadays are <clears throat> relatively common. So here we have in this slide the link for the interim list of changes to municipal boundaries, status and names for Statistics Canada. This is very, very important when you are reporting to that to that level, especially when you are dealing with the data because you want to be sure that what you are reporting really reflects what is happening. Sometimes there's very, very big dramatic changes that are not due to the fact that there have been uh, as that such dramatic changes in the variable that you are reporting or that you are using. It's just because there has been a change in the definition of the variable 
in the definition of the geography. The census is a continuous, it's a dynamic entity, it's a dynamic job, it's a dynamic survey that is always struggling in between keeping their consistency to be comparable among different periods of time and being relevant for the content that it has in order to make it more uh, uh, accessible and more uh, uh, relevant for society. So for example, in 2021, we have these main changes in the content regarding the 2020-16 census. You can see here they are enumerated. I won't uh, I'll put so much uh, uh, detail on that, but for the first time we include gender, not only sex at birth, but gender, we will explain in the next slide what are the main differences for that, because that was one of the of the variables that has been uh, we have been collecting information from our, our uh, uh, stakeholders in terms that they want to include us that into the in, into the census, and we finally were able to find a solution that keeps the comparability with the incorporation of this new issue. Also, instruction in the official minority language, so uh, the English speakers are. A considered minority in Quebec and the French speakers are considered a minority outside Quebec. So we try to approach that issue with the mother language in this uh, in this fashion. The Canadian military experience, uh, some information that hasn't been collected since 1971, was again introduced to the census in order to get great information about the state of the military and veterans nowadays the membership in Metis organization and the enrollment of uh, Inuit land claim agreement to distinguish for other agreements from the First Nation people into the uh, indigenous people, multiple modes of commuting. In the old days, we were just talking about the main mode of commuting. Now we are trying to collect more detailed information to have a better, better information, better tools available for planners. The main reason for not working full time or not working the whole year and shelter costs for band housing that also was very important because that way we can also estimate some shelter cost ratio for subsidized housing or for uh, more marginal population or population with lower incomes that could be living in northern communities or Indian reserves, indigenous reserves. Okay, so for example, this is how we try to approach the gaps in the gender diversity in Canada. Those are Traditionally, we were collecting only the sex of the of the person, and it was a dichotomy between males and females. Now we try to keep the continuity by defining the sex at birth. So that was the part that keep trying to keep a link in between previous data or data from previous censuses with the with the new one. And we also collect something about some information about the gender, and then we made the definition for cisgender transgender and non-binary people. This is with the aim to fill those gaps that many of our stakeholders were telling us and were expecting us to fill it up. So hopefully some of this information will help to understand better all these issues regarding gender with society. And uh, some of the information is not available at very low uh, uh, geographies or very small geographies because the numbers are very low and again we have to keep track or we have to keep considerations for the uh, confidentiality and privacy of the respondent. Other, other concepts also that has been uh, uh, evolving and is very popular is the concept of family. In, in 1941 the, the concept of, of 51 the concept of census family was it was introduced that is related to the traditional concept of family and then in 81 we began to collect information about common laws and then in 2001 same-sex common law couples in 2004 the same-sex marriage was legal in Canada so in 2006 we began to collect information about same-sex married couples and then 2011 we uh, uh, modified we put a wider umbrella to collect information about step families. And finally, in this census, also we collect how the gender issue can be related to the formation and the concepts regarding families and 
sex and gender. Okay, so you can see it's always, always a trade off, it's always a uh, balance issue that has to do or has to be with regarding the, the fact that we want to keep continuity to make comparable in, uh, or data that we're collecting to all the censuses and a trade off and uh, the, the issue that we want to keep uh, or, uh, or information or data uh, relevant for our society. So we want to keep track of all the issues that are important, that are relevant, that are taking place in the society as we are moving into the into the 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 new uh, uh, issues that are important, that are relevant for the Canadian society. So, any questions? Any notes? I. Took advantage that in the in the chat, uh, Darren and, and Desiree were uh, orienting you or were giving you some hints or, or some links about the data comparability. And again, the main recommendation is when you are trying to do some comp uh, comparability in between censuses, always, always check in the dictionary, try to figure it out if the concepts, if the definitions, if the variables, if the geographies are consistent. If they are not consistent, try to check if the changes make it still comparable or not, and then explain why this is happening. And hopefully that will help you to understand better for you and for your audience why those issues are important or what other limitation has to be considered when you are reporting data from the census. OK, any questions? I will stop here if you don't mind. As you can see, this part of the presentation is very, very, very brief because basically it's just the last considerations for you to make uh, as sen uh, make sense of the data that is available there. The next part of the presentation will be an exercise, but before that, I think Matt has an uh, important message for you to consider before we finish the presentation. Um, I think there is a, a question, but but then uh, after you answer the question, then maybe I can I can jump in. But. Okay. Uh, I have one general question. Will we have access to ops? It disappeared. Sorry. Let me go to the chat because I I, I was in I was in. The, to the chat, and will there be a discussion covering steps on getting data via API? Don't know if that question is relevant now. Oh, okay, Jacob. Uh, to be honest, I don't work. I don't have experience working with the API that much because it's not a topic that I deal with in the presentations or with the clients that I deal with. But if you want, uh, I will contact uh, uh, people in the in the agency and send me an email. I don't know if they have my email, uh, uh, Matt. Um, yep, they, they should all have okay. an email because send I send me an email to remind me. I will, I will contact the, the, the people in the agency that may have the best information regarding that, and I will pass it to you because right now what I know about the app is that basically it is available for the people. Okay, um, Darren already put at least the, the link that has the most general information. Please, uh, uh, Jacob, review that information. If the information that is there is still not good enough, then contact us or in, in a specific contact me, and I will try to contact the person that may have more information for that, okay? Because I'm not very familiar with that. I will be, uh, it will be very unfair to try to tell you, try to cover some of my ignorance with that, okay? Thank you, thank you, Jacob. And thank you, Darren, for the link. I, I always forget about that, that link. I, basically don't use it <laughs> and I forgot about that. Thank you. So uh, th th thank you so much, uh, Francisco and, and everyone. Um, thanks for your wonderful teaching and, and thank you for all your engagement in the session. Uh, we're going to break out into a training session really quick, um, but I do realize people will be dropping in and out. Um, you may finish a little bit earlier, all of that stuff in this last period. So. I just wanted to pop into the the chat uh, the link for the evaluation just for for our comments for future sessions. 
Um, if you do have, um, I encourage you to, to complete this now. We'll give you a few minutes. Um, and then if you do have future comments about the exercise or anything like that, um, please feel free to reach out to me and, and give me some of those comments about what you liked about it or anything like that for the future, just because um, we, we'd, we'd like to improve and, and make sure that we're serving you all uh, uh, for the, the future. So um, here's here's the link for it, and then we'll start the exercise in a, in a few minutes. OK, thank you. Thank you, Matt. So. After I finish reading the, the exercise or give you the instructions for the exercise, then I will stop the recording. And then the reports of the exercise won't need to be recorded. Is that correct, Matt? OK, thank you. So I will give you a couple of minutes, if you don't mind, for going to the link. Is that correct? Thank you. Yep, just, just a, a few more minutes and then mm -hmm. we can go. And, and you will the last know. question doesn't apply. <laughs> OK, you will let me know when, when you think we, yeah. we should be continuing. Thank you. Sounds Bye. good. Thank you. Oh, Francisco, there was a link that you shared that didn't seem to work. I think it was an internal link. Yeah, Francisco, that link seems to be taking us to the GC docs. I was mute. Uh, sorry, what link? What link are you talking about, guys? Uh, maybe if you click on it, um, then you'll see because we, we can't open it, so we don't know what it is. <laughs> OK, so sorry to be so reiterative, but I don't know what link are you in, talking about in the chat. Uh huh. The second last post in the chat, there's a link. It's from Ubuntu. And it's apparently from you. I just tried it and it takes it to GC Docs sign in. Oh my God. Oh, uh, Webutu, you can I I cannot recognize that uh, that link. Sorry, Webutu, you can give me more information about uh, uh, that link. Will it refer to? Because I don't recognize it. I have to be honest. I I don't recognize it. So Webutu, you can if you can uh, or somebody recognize that that link. It might be the video recording. Oh yeah, oh, the, the, the video, video recording. Oh okay. Yeah, you, you no, won't that, have access to the videos until we download and we upload. I'll send those as yeah, as and, a week and it afterwards. Will take, yeah, sorry, it will take it a little bit because uh, I'm not that very good in recording, <laughs> so I I need my time to to do that. So hopefully by uh, later this week, uh, I, we will have available. Sorry about that, but I didn't I didn't recognize. OK, I think um, if you're OK with um, if people are still answering, you can still complete later, but we do really encourage you to, to complete it just for our knowledge and everything moving forward. Um, but I think you're going to explain the exercise now, right, Francisco? Thank you. Thank you, Matt, again. So uh, 
the exercise basically I will random assign you people to groups. Uh, so far I'm seeing here that there are 13 participants. So maybe I will create three or three groups of four people or four groups of three people, something like that. Uh, we will be Darren and I, uh, and this year will be around just available for any questions. Uh, Matt is suggesting two groups, two groups of five, maybe. OK, that's fine. If, if you think that it that is, uh, is visible that way, we can do it that way. And I will read the exercise to give you more or less an idea how to go. It's pretty, pretty simple. As we say in the at the beginning of the exercise, I hope that you have copied, you have access to the to the text that we send you. The main objective is to demonstrate that you have learned and are able to recognize information about available from the census. Of course, that will be done by checking census data that is available in the census tabulations, in the geography tools, and in the uh, uh, cross tabulation. So the other objective will be that you are able to use data to gain further understanding of how to describe characteristics related to not just your area or in, of interest, but larger areas. OK, so that maybe you can do a comparison or put comparison or do some comparability regarding larger geographies. OK, after you finish searching for data, your team will report back to the full class your, with your main findings. So it will be like a small, very brief verbal report about where you were studying, describing where, where you were studying, how do you find information, and what are the main issues that you are reporting on that. OK, following will be the guidelines for the exercise. Start by selecting a geography area. Ideally, the group will select a geography area in which none of the group members are located. And at this point, I strongly suggest you to select one census subdivision or one municipality. That way, we are very restricted with time, but that way, by selecting one municipality, you can type the name in the census profiles, and bingo, chances are that will appear the census profile, and that way you will save a lot of time than if you go to um, a smaller geography and you began to look into the codes and all the possibilities with the census profile. But feel free, if you feel confident enough, then bingo, go for the big, uh, big uh, uh, part part of the of the cake and try to go that way. But my personal suggestion: go for a census subdivision or a larger urban center, census metropolitan area, census agglomeration, and that way will help you to 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 go a little bit faster on that. Once the area is selected, the groups can start anywhere among the census data. We strongly recommend you to use the census profile at your starting point for the reason that we already enumerated. And remember, keep trying to use the links and the recommendations that we cover during the presentation. Select just a topic or just a variable. I know that it will look like very, very juicy and very ambitious to go for a very, very comprehensive coverage, but we don't have the time right now. You can do it later on if you want it by yourself and test yourself in the uh, in how will you understand or you will use the data later on. From there, select a topic of variable from the profile list and make note of how the counts and or the rates differ from, for example, Alberta or the whole Canada. Usually adding some context in terms of a comparison will help to enrich the understanding of the topic. That's the reason we are suggesting that. Once you have found your data, your initial data, go to a, a data table, a cross tabulation table, which contains the topic of the variable you have chosen. There's the link there and break the data down into further detail, noting how the count or the race differs among subcategories of the variable you choose. So once that you are there, you will get into the data and you will be able to recognize what is the important piece of the information that is there. When you're seeing a tabulation, not all the figures, not all the cells that are there in the table are relevant for your goal, for your objective. Just select the one that calls your attention, that are relevant, that you think is important for your audience. In this case, your colleagues that are attending this workshop to know about in this topic. For example, you wish to explore the low income rate within the census tract or census subdivisions. From there, you could use a data table to explore how the low income counts and or rates differ among segments of the population, such 
as by household type or immigration status or other subgroups that are available. So I'm counting that you have the exercise in your hands or available, or you can access that in your terminal, in your computer. And then if you don't have any more questions or uh, uh, comments, I will split randomly the people, two groups. Everybody agrees, two groups basically will be five people. Darren and Desiree may be randomly assigned to one of the groups, but they will be more on observers. And then anything else, I will be around here in the lobby for whatever question you may have. And we will be back, it's 10.31 at 11.20 Pacific time. Uh, that is 12.20 uh, uh, mountain time. To make a very brief report of what you were with your main findings and grab up the presentation. So at this moment, I'm starting the rooms and then I will be I will be stopping the recording. Okay, so there are the two groups are ready. Go for it. So this is good. One group is with Darren. Are we being assigned groups, Francisco? Uh, yeah, because you, you're part of the of the audience. Unfortunately, you and and Desi are in the same group in the same room. Okay, uh, but I I haven't been assigned to a room yet. Okay. Uh, it says here that it's already been assigned. Let me see if I can get rid of this. Uh, uh, uh. Assign participants, no. Cancel and then let me see if I open. I'm opening the rooms now. Should be there. Are you going there into the groups? No. Oh my God. Have you been assigned it now? I'm empty. I'm, I'm by myself in the. Have you been assigned it this year? Um, I was in the room ten, but some's been kicked out. Okay. Oh. Let me see. First, I, well, sorry. I will just stop the 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 transcript, the recording.